Thank you so much for staying with us, everyone. Let, let me quickly throw this poser to you, wherever you may be watching. What do you think is Nigeria's major problem? Okay, I can hear some people say leadership. Some people will say corruption. Well, some people believe it is corruption. Whatever the problem may be, that's what the federal government says it wants to fight. And the way and manner in which they're going about it is what gets us talking, especially on a day when some of the experts came together to say there is an endemic corruption, not only in the Nigerian system, but in the civil service. And you heard Professor Isasage say there that, look, what kind of mentality gets into people who steal so much money that you cannot even finish in a lifetime? Mr. Liberos Oshama, a lawyer based in Lagos, has been talking to us on this one. Uh, civil service, uh, when you talk about budget, corruption in the budget process, you again talk about the civil servants. Mm -hmm. And in all of this, how bad is it? Very bad, very, very bad. Because um, um, in this climb, we see government's own as nobody's own. Mm -hmm. and, and so it is easy for it to be taken. And then also, the, our, our statutes, labor statutes, labor laws, also do not help matters. And so you find out that um, um, employment that has uh, are statutorily flavored, it is difficult for you to fire. And um, but then, so that's why we also need begin to look at our books and rework them, the civil service rules. And so this idea of a man is uh, presumed to be corrupt or has corruptly enriched himself, you transfer him from one department to another department. Look at what happened in River State in INEC. So all the officials are going to be transferred to another state where they'll be allowed to perpetrate another form of corruption. Just the same way it happened in the budget office last year. Nobody was fired. Instead, they were transferred to other places. And, and so what it means is you'll just be given a pat on the back and asked to go and sin no more. And then when you, where you actually go and you know, continue the sin because it's not endemic in you. And then also it brings me to the policing. The EFCC alone cannot do all the job. Maybe the whistleblowing uh, uh, policy now may do the job. If you, you, if, you so? if you blew a whistle, you need somebody to follow up. And then in following up also, you need somebody to prosecute. And so it shouldn't just end up in blowing the whistle. Mm -hmm. And then also, there's what you call the witness protection program. So where the witness would have confidence that, look, I will be protected. Because in Nigeria, we don't have it. And, and so when you reform the police also, no matter how small the issue is, if the police is able to curb it, you know, nip it in the bud, so that man knows that there are repercussions. Mm. Liberals, whatever, every action. whatever happens to the change begins with me campaign. Exactly. That's... Because I think to a large extent, whatever anybody may think, I, I, f I think naturally that because what Professor Sisage was saying there that what kind of menta kleptomaniac mentality and psy psyche of the people when they want to steal and steal, I, I do think that it's it becoming cultural. To a large extent, the change begins with make campaign becomes uh, something that is very useful. It's a slogan. But all of a sudden, that, uh, no, no, that, no, that, that has gone under Shale, again. It's more of a slogan. Um, and, and so, for slogans, you say, change begins with me and it ends there. And how about people who changes are not beginning with? Mm. What becomes of them? And so if nothing becomes of them, then that's, you know, uh, change begins with me, we end up as a slogan. And that is what it has become. Because that's, that's a fundamental for me, problem of, of a culture of corruption yeah, that, that is sweeping the, the, show, the system, that is endemic be, like this. Because you there are no repercussions. The for law, example, the in the law civil is, service, what the, would you suggest? The law is a paper tiger when there are no sanctions, when, there are, mm. when your sanctions are not imposed. And, and so it remains there. If you steal, you get 10 years imprisonment with hard labor. It's there. But until you begin to enforce it against everybody, irrespective of your position. If, and if, that's if, why for me, I think it's all about committees. Mm. Even for me, these Sesage committees are necessary. Because it's almost every day you hear Sesage said this, Sesage said that. Will that help the problem? Will that solve the problem? So the problem is, why don't you begin to reform your structure, reform your civil service, reform your policing, reform your judicial system mm. to ensure that the windmill of justice no longer grinds slowly. There were days, if you read um, uh, Fatai Williams' uh, uh, places, faces, and, cases, places, and faces, mm -hmm. there were days where you begin a case on Monday, and by 
Friday yeah. you're delivering yeah. judgment yeah. in criminal matters. I thought, I mean, the, 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 uh, the Professor Sasagi Committee has actually recommended, uh, and part of something that they said they're pushing is uh, the, the, the criminal uh, administration, administ administ administration of criminal acts. Go, which says that, that even on weekends, you, you can, uh, you let can me hear show, some cases. Show, as brilliant and as beautiful as the Administration of Criminal Justice Act is, you need equipment yeah. to enforce that act. Let me even give you a very, uh, you know, a small opening to it. Do you, do you know that before now, you, you tender a, con a confessional statement in court, and the first thing the defense lawyer does is he raises raise an objection to that ad admissibility of the confessional statement. That, that statement was not voluntarily made. Mm. And, and so there's trial within trial. And now what the Administration of Criminal Justice did was to say, look, you can no longer obtain a confessional statement without video evidence. Mm. But the police, do they have, have the equipment? The... All right, just before, because we need to talk about have the uh, uh, Professor Shimbajo in the, in the creeks now, in the creeks in court. Uh, a lot of, what is the perception about this anti-corruption war? Uh, some people will say it's one-sided. We can do more. I won't say it's one-sided because he who comes to equity must come with clean hands, but we can do much more. Um, but what does I it look more? like the government of the day is serious about that corruption? Do you think the noise is more than the work? Yes, I think the noise is more than the work. Because um, from what I see, you need to actually start reform so that as you're working, you really don't need to shout much. Your work will speak for, for, right. for, for, for yourself. Let's quickly go to this point because I want to uh, get your, uh, your take on it uh, before we go on the program. Nigeria has struggled to attain a 2.2 million barrel per day oil production. Uh, that's because of uh, the issue of uh, militancy and attacks, several attacks on oil uh, installations in Nigeria. Last year, we experienced uh, a what may call, be called a what situation with a series of militant attacks on oil installations. Leading the acting president has been talking with uh, interest groups and leaders in the Niger Delta region. And it seems that that, uh, that is working. We once again have seen some kind of peace in the area. And for a first time in a long time in Nigeria, we have hit about 2 million oil production. Is this coincidental or is it magical or is this um, some form of uh, a deep thinking or is working? Um, I, I would uh, simply say um, when, you, when you do something, when you're passionate about something, you do it effortlessly. And when you do it effort effortlessly, it looks magical to people. And, and so that's what you see the vice president doing. You know, he's doing something he's passionate about. Uh, you see him do it effort effortlessly. In, uh, shall I tell you, after the last election, prior to the last, uh, prior to the last election, it was as if we were preparing for war. Some even predicted that Nigeria was not going to survive beyond 2015. But at the end of the day, we did, and we shook hands. I had, and we had never been that divided along two party lines. And, and so I had expected that immediately after the, after the election, the president ought to have done what Oshibanjo is doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, go around. But even, is it still late in the day? It's not late in the day. But That's why you see that everybody is eulogizing Oshibanjo as if oh, the, his, his uh, principal didn't do anything, and then the man is uh, taking all the accolade. But now, so are, there's more of carrot now rather than the stick. No, what he is basically doing now is what you would call. But look, um, uh, a, a Nigerian a building a, a, a Nigerian dream. We need, to, you know. we need to leave it at that. Mr. Liberal Sashoma, many thanks. Always it's a pleasure job. having you talk Same to job. us on some of these issues. And it might be, have gotten you talking, and we may not have had enough time to talk about it. Why not let us reconnect on Twitter and let's continue the conversation? That's our show for tonight. Many thanks for being part of it. On behalf of the team, I'm Shion Kimbale. Bye for now.